that's the future. Right. Frank, funding. So, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the BFW Post Commander, Justin Cuevas, Operation Iraqi Freedom United States Marine Corps. I did two tours. And uh, we're all out here tonight for the support of the BFW, as well as recognizing citizens of our community that have been outstanding. They uh, represent us, the future of America, as well as law enforcement officers that preserve our communities. And we also are here to recognize fellow veterans who embody what the BFW is about. We have numerous special guests tonight with us. Um, we have Charles Andrew Griffin, the Director of Veteran Services and NAU. He's also on the State Board of Veterans Assistance. Will you please stand up, sir? <laughs> We have the Citizen of the Year and the State Commander of the Military Order of the Purple Heart, Billy Weldon. We have the local commander of the Military Order of the Purple Heart, Lupe Velasco. We have Bob Wiley, the Commandant of the Marine Corps League and Flag Staff. We have Peter Clover, the President of the Military Officers Association of America. Dear Lord, as we come together this evening, we thank you for the opportunity to recognize these men and women who have distinguished themselves in the promotion of democracy and in service for their community. Lord, we thank you for the many who have donated their time, efforts, and resources to making this evening possible and pray that you would be with all who participate in our activities this evening. Lord, we also want to thank you for everyone here tonight, knowing that each and every one has worked hard individually and collectively to make our nation and our community the great place it is today. Lord, we thank you for the food. We thank you for the abundance that you've always provided. And we pray that you would bless our time together, that it would be a time of thoughtful reflection and a time of coming together as family, friends, and as a community. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. We're going to move over to the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Two. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you enter to the dining out tonight, this evening, you may have noticed a small table to my left in a place of honor near our head table. It is set for one. The military cast is filled with symbolism. This table is our way of symbolizing the fact that members of our profession of arms are missing from our midst. They are commonly called POW MIAs. We call them brothers. We are all comrades in the United States Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard. So the first award that we're going to be presenting is one from the membership here that we present. It's for our Veteran of the Year. It's veterans that we know are in everything we do. Their hands are in every jar. And one of them we nominated to this year, one of them's our Mafia Enforcer. You go around, you know where he is. He's in everything, he does everything. And if you're not a member of the VFW, he'll find a way to make you join. And he's been my mentor, and he's one of the ones that put me up to become the commander of the VFW. And uh, I'd like to bring him up right now. That's Billy Weldon. So this is a plaque that we had made for Billy, and for any of you that don't know, he was also nominated and won the Citizen of the Year for Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, Billy is everywhere. He is what a veteran is. He's all over Arizona representing us, representing the Purple Heart, and representing what a veteran is and what he can do for everyone here in this community. And I'm presenting him personally and for all veterans this award. Thank you. 
I guess I, I've been pretty lucky this year, but, I, you know, this is getting kind of old. <laughs> and, and I, you know, everybody in this room, everybody does something special, you know, every single day. If it's putting your kids to bed, or it's helping your next door neighbor shovel the walkway, or, you know, so I'm, I'm very humbled. And uh, was it a month ago when they gave me Citizen of the Year? I dedicated that award to two organizations, and I'm going to do the same here tonight. The first one was our military, the men and women in the service, and all the men and women that never came home, and to our law enforcement community. You know, we had a tra tragedy in Flagstaff four or five weeks ago, and uh, this town has come together and it has made it a, a stronger community. And without our law enforcement and our military, you know, this country would be in you know, a dear earth. So to our law enforcement, Tyler Stewart, Jeff Maroots, uh, this is to you guys. And thank you for protecting us always. God bless you, everybody here in this room. Um, the next veteran of the year we nominated to, as I said, He's extremely humble. He didn't want a plaque. His hands are in the cookie jar just as much as Billy's. And he's my second mentor. And he's another one that pushed me to become the commander of the post. And that's Rex Sturmer. And I know he's hiding in the back. And I know he can hear me. So, Dorothy also. And Billy's going to say a few words right before we hand it over to Rex. Billy ever say a few words? <laughs> Rex and I make a good team, but Rex did I didn't want this award and Rex didn't want it either, so they made us both take it. But, and Rex didn't want a plaque. And, and there's a lot of people in here. We're on the honor guard. We bury all the veterans in town. And Rex wanted one thing for Veteran of the Year. He wanted a $25 gift certificate at Starbucks. <laughs> After we bury people, we go to Starbucks and you know, just kind of relax and, and figure out if we did something wrong or we can make it better. So tonight, Rex, uh, happy Veteran of the Year, and we got your $25. <laughs> Thank you. I will turn this over to the chaplain. He's the only one trustworthy to hold on to. <laughs> and he's the only reason we have a prayer, okay? Uh, I think it's very important. Uh, the brotherhood of, of soldiers is no different than the brotherhood. When they say brotherhood in uniform, it doesn't matter whether it's blue, tan, it's green, it's multicolored. That brotherhood goes deep. It runs very deep. And as so many of our veterans are passing away, these guys all show up. They burn their own gas on their own time to provide that last semblance of service to those veterans and to their families. It's more important than I can ever imagine. The veterans of foreign wars are there. The Marine Corps League does the rifle salute. Uh, the Scottish American Military Society folds the flag and presents it. Uh, Bill Veely provides taps. We provide uh, last honors and prayers from our chaplain. Everybody that's served on the, the honor guard, please stand up. Let's give them all a hand. Come on. Come on, on These guys show up all the time. Last year, we had over 37 funerals for veterans in the Flagstaff area. So they do it quite often, and that's why I wanted the coffee money, because after we do it in the middle of a snowstorm, it's really nice to get a hot cup of coffee. Thank you. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit on the agenda, and we're going to do the business. Okay. He's the youngest commander in the state of Arizona. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> uh, the, next up, we're going to do business of the year. Um, one of them isn't here, but we had 4M Construction. Um, they're always here at State Night supporting the VFW and making contributions. The second one is Rick's Automotive and Rick Lindstrom. 
and uh, he's constantly assisting veterans with vehicle repairs, and he has a personal and deep connection with his son passing away in support of our freedom. And uh, I'd like Rick to come up here. story here. Uh, how many Flag PD remembers this guy? Yeah. All right. Flag PD. His son was Flag PD before he gave his life. I sent a World War II veteran over there. Uh, Navy World War II veteran. Uh, the lifters on his old Ford truck, because he only drive it once every five years, <laughs> finally stuck. And I sent him over. He called me back later and he says, that was the greatest man I ever was near. He says, before we got done, we hugged each other, and he fixed his truck, and he didn't get a million dollar bill, all right? And although Billy Weldon and the Purple Heart Truck goes all over this whole state, who do you think keeps it running, keeps it polished, changes the oil, and fixes all the breakdowns when it dies somewhere on its way there? It's Rick. And... You know, he does more for veterans and for the community and has done so for years. And I don't think we can thank him enough and thank his family enough. He's a gold star parent, without a doubt. I've known Rick all my life. We've both went to Flag High. And uh, how humbling it is here today to... As Rick is the law enforcement, we have all the law enforcement here. His son was law enforcement. And we uh, built that Purple Heart truck with 54 names on it for everybody in Flagstaff that was killed in a war. And uh, so Eric, and you know, it lives on. And, uh, you know, it, it's great to know you, Rick. And we're gonna, we got many, many years of good things going, buddy. <laughs> Next up, we're going to have our Teacher of the Year, Sean Ryan, if you want to please come up. And we also have the Principal of Dave Miguel come on up and say a few words for him. Okay, I, I wrote a speech, you know, I don't get the opportunity to brag about my teachers near enough and to have this moment to to share some of the wonderful things that Mr. Ryan does in our building. Um, just excuse me if this is a little too long, just please bear with me because he deserves every, every word of this speech for him. Um, Mr. Ryan and I really like to talk. He likes to talk more because he's a teacher and he teaches fourth grade, so he's always out there talking to the kids. And the word that comes up a lot when him and I speak is stewardship. Sean Ryan believes that stewardship of the environment is everyone's responsibility. And looking at our school community, he is committed to making connections between our school and community members for at least the seven years that I have worked with him. Here are just a few, I mean this is just a little bit of the examples that he has done at D. Miguel Elementary School. He's worked countless hours helping the fourth grade students write letters to veterans. Veterans were invited in to share experiences and help students understand wars. The letters to vet veterans include an invite to our assembly, the Veterans Assembly, which he has hosted now for many years. It is such a meaningful experience for all of us to watch the veterans in these assemblies. Our science fair seven years ago was a one-night event for, for just the upper grades, like our fourth and fifth graders. Under Sean's leadership, it has now become a two-week two -week extravaganza with people coming in and helping all of our kindergarten through fifth grade students look at their science fair projects and learn how the wonder of science has created such an energy in our building. He has forever changed the path of our STEAM night, having experts from science, technology, engineering, arts, and math come to our events, showing, showcasing the work of all of our students. We had a Make a Difference, which is cleaning the grounds of our school. We used to do that one time a year. Since Sean has 
led this campaign for cleaning our school grounds, we have had many, many um, making difference days, at least 10 to 15 community members come and help clean our trails and our outside learning environments. And he does this because he believes in his cause. He shares his passions for science and has led multiple professional development opportunities for his, co our, for his colleagues, our colleagues. Those are just a few examples of the leadership of Sean Ryan. He believes in the Flagstaff community. He believes in his family. He believes in our school. He is the, one of the most genuine people I know. Congratulations, Sean. I am lucky to be a colleague and friend. And I have all these witnesses when I say to you, someday I hope to work for you. Sean four years ago when I got a letter that they sent out in the Veterans State program. I got a letter and the little boy came to invite me to the uh, Veterans Day program. The little boy said he was dead. So I called up and found out where what classroom he was in. He was in Sean's classroom. Sean set it up for me with a uh, sign language teacher so I could come and read the letter off in his class. And uh, it was very humbling that day when I went over this year and told him he was teacher of the year. I walked around the corner and the little boy, the little deaf boy, was standing there. And he looked at me and he had a same te uh, sign language teacher and he said, Hi, Mr. Weldon. <laughs> and he said, What are you doing here? And I said, Your teacher, Sean is teacher of the year. <laughs> Mom, come in, Mom. And the little boy smiled and a little tear came down his eye. And that's what the teacher of the year is. Oh, that's okay. We can adapt. <laughs> well, I, I just have to take a moment to say uh, just how honored and, and thankful I am to be here. Um, it just, everything about it. Uh, there are so many people here who have really helped support things. Uh, having Mr. Weldon come into the office and I got my name called over the announcements to go to the office there, and I run pretty busy, so to be honest, I, uh, it, it first hit me where I said, uh-oh, what did I forget? <laughs> so, so I went on down, and, and just fantastic to see him there and, and, uh, and get to hear about this award. But this award as a teacher um, just really speaks volumes about our community. Um, we have so many, as a teacher, so many families, uh, so many students who really do the work. Um, I help coordinate a little bit, but they do the big work. Um, and then all of you, we've had so many veterans really help support and make a difference in our students' lives at Day Miguel with our program. Uh, that's really been fantastic. Um, Lynn Trutner uh, isn't here tonight, but she's really been an inspiration and heart behind our Veterans Day program. And, we have adventures to go on. Uh, but uh, just the place that I work. I, I have a wonderful place to work, a great boss who really helps facilitate having wonderful activities. Um, my parents, you know, I thought it was ironic here. I, I have a wonderful apple for a teacher. The joke was laid tonight that the apple might have fallen far from the tree, I think. But, uh, but I don't think so all that much. My, my parents are really wonderful. Um, and my wife and my daughter really help drive everything that I do. So I just want to say thank you. I, I really appreciate this. Sorry, we have to take time for pictures. That's how it works. <laughs> Well, Chantel Schmidt. Yeah, we do. I think so. 
First place, we're going to have Bailey Thurgood come up and her parents as well, and she's also going to read her essay. our nation's history and future. Veterans, did I say that wrong? Yes. What did I say? Sure. Um, <laughs> let's try that again. Okay. Why veterans are important to our nation's history and future. Jack, lessons from a war veteran. The sun had just begun to rise over the horizon, the sky a vibrant salmon that danced across the glistening water. Jack had just woken up and was enjoying the sunrise. He and his friend were conversing about their plans for the day when a low rumbling began to sound and Jack could feel the vibrations get increasingly louder and more powerful. He had heard and felt this before and usually didn't think much of it, but this time something was off. It was a Sunday. The Navy shouldn't be training pilots today. Before he could even come to a conclusion, what felt like hundreds of fighter planes came screaming overhead. Both men were rocked from their seats by a roaring explosion. They were mortified by the destruction within the harbor. Pearl Harbor was under an attack. It was at that moment when the harbor was covered in flaming oil and the whales of the dying reached every side of the island that Jack knew he needed to enroll in the army and defend his country. He knew he would be going to war. That notorious day led Jack on an incredible journey where he not only learned a few lessons but shared many others with the people of his nation. First of all, his decision to willingly put his life on the line and protect others was a true act of patriotism. This is the case for all veterans. We enjoy so many freedoms and comforts today because of their actions. Most Americans are proud to be citizens of this country, but those who are the greatest examples of patriotism <coughs> have to be our nation's veterans. Second, Jack needed to have an enormous amount of bravery in order to join the army. He was sent to Europe in 1944, where he eventually became a part of the strate Strategic Bombing Survey Crews. Flying at the time was dangerous, making it a job to definitely be worried about. He went into every mission with his head held high. Regardless of the assignment our veterans were given in the military, they all had to face them with courage. These men and women have shown Americans that we can overcome the impossible. If they were able to perform with such high stakes and expectations, what is stopping the rest of us from facing something more simple? This is most definitely a lesson that we can learn from our veterans. Along with bravery, veterans have also shown us determination. Once they took that step forward, there was no turning back. Jack knew exactly what he had to do and put his whole heart into completing his assigned tasks. In order to defend your country, you need the necessary determination to complete trainings and missions. That determination carried so many men and women through some of the greatest trials of their lives. Veterans are some of the most determined people I've ever seen. Finally, veterans have taught America the meaning of sacrifice. Jack, like so many other young men, left behind a brand new bride. Veterans gave up their families, careers, time, money, and their lives to ensure that those back home were protected. Veterans have been willing <coughs> Excuse me. Veterans have been willing to pay whatever price came their way. Sometimes they even had to sacrifice each other if it meant that a bigger populace would survive. These men and women faced hardships that have made them into the amazing examples of sacrifice that they are today. This past year, Jack passed away. Jack was my great-grandfather. I love listening to his experiences in the war and learning more about him, the era, and the lessons that he learned while in the army. Even though he's gone, I'm learning so much from what he had to share with his country yeah. and my family. As you can tell, I focus mainly on World War II for my examples, but all of these qualities and lessons apply to any veteran from any time. All of our veterans have been of great significance to us because of the valuable lessons that they've taught us. We just have one problem. These important characteristics, patriotism, bravery, determination, and sacrifice, are becoming harder and harder to find in our nation's people. It seems as though these qualities are just disappearing. 
So exactly how are we to revive these traits and install them in our citizens' characters? The answer is through the legacy of our veterans. Just as Jack's legacy, and those like him, have been shared with me, I likewise intend to share them with others. The veterans are important to America's future because they are the ones who set the best example, the ones who have been showing their character for years. We need to look to our veterans and strive to become like them. Along with following their example and learning from them, we need to thank them. The next time you see a veteran, give them a wave and say hello. Thank them for their service. Let them know that you care. America's veterans have given us so much inside and outside of service. Probably the best gift we have been given is their example of these characteristics. Veterans have proven that they have been important to our nation's history and will continue to impact our future by giving us lessons such as patriotism, bravery, determination, and sacrifice. Thank you. Next up will be our Patriots Pen Award winner. And we have Alexis Howard. Mom and Dad, yep. Don't let them get out of it. She will also read her essay. I'm writing this because I want to know what veterans mean to me. I am also a Navajo, and being a Navajo, we honor and respect our veterans, and we live the war tradition. My sister was in the U.S. Army for 12 years, and she did three tours in Iraq with her husband, who was also in the Army during Operation Iraqi Freedom. During this time, they were also from away from their firstborn son three times before he was five years old. My dad was in the United States Army, and he served in the 4th Infantry Division and the 3rd Infantry Division in West Germany. My brother was a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps, first force recon. He was immediately sent to Afghanistan following September 11th in search of Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda terrorists. In 2003, he went to Iraq during Operation Iraqi Freedom. He was a Marine Scout sniper team leader. He was also awarded a Bronze Star Medal and a Commendation Medal, Navy Commendation Medal, for his bravery and valor in separate combat actions, where without regard of his personal safety, he saved an Iraqi citizen who was shot during a firefight and recovered a fellow Marine who was killed in action and carried him back three miles to a Marine outpost. He himself was shot during this rescue and also endured numerous combat wounds, an IED explosion and RPG attacks that suffered from post-traumatic stress and, and traumatic brain injury and received three Purple Hearts. He wasn't just my brother, he was also my best friend, but he took his life last February after suffering for 10 years with post-traumatic PTSD and TBI from two wars in the Middle East. I also have several uncles who served in the Vietnam, and my father's dad was in the U.S. Navy as a pilot, and he crashed on an aircraft carrier in the Pacific. Veterans are my inspiration to be who I want to be later on in life. The reason why I appreciate veterans is because they are important people who take, one, one, to, who take care one another. It's not what they accomplished that made them great. It was what they stood for. Our freedom is not free. Our veterans have given it to us. We are the land of the free because of the brave. Thank you. Yeah. Next up, we will be doing the Law Enforcement Officers of the Year. First, we will have NAU Police Department, Corporal Lance Wigley, and will Missy Fresh Hour come up? I know you guys have consistently done this 
from a long, long, long time ago. <laughs> and we appreciate it as a community member as well as law enforcement that you take the time to recognize us as well as other community members. So thank you guys for having us here tonight. Um, also, I want to say, although Mr. Ryan stepped out for dad duty, um, Mr. Ryan was my daughter's teacher last year for fourth grade and absolutely deserves the award. Um, she loved them. She was engaged. She never complained about ass assignments, never complained about going to school and being here. So I just want everyone to know that it's a well-deserved award, and I want to say congratulations to Mr. Ryan. So moving on, uh, Officer Lance Wigley, Corporal, sorry, Corporal Lance Wigley was our Officer of the Year for NAUPD for 2014. Um, our award is done as a peer, um, peer recognition, I guess, and I think that is especially important when you look at what Lance did for the past year. Uh, when you think of law enforcement, you may not think of what Lance did for the past year. <laughs> Lance was pretty much in an office, and he helped our department move towards new technology and going to electronic report writing and electronic records keeping and things of that nature. So I don't think any of us in law enforcement when we got hired said I want to be a police officer because I want to do records and electronic report writing um, behind the scenes. We talked about doing other things. Um, but Lance had the aptitude to do it. He, it was recognized he had the aptitude and the skill to make this happen. Um, it definitely takes a special skill set to do those technology um, advancements. Not all of us are cut out to do that. Uh, when he was approached with that, he did not complain about getting pulled off the road to sit in an office for a year to work on this project because it was a long, involved project. The other thing to consider is it wasn't just a patrol officer's focus. Uh, he had to work with the front end with dispatchers, and he had to work with the patrol officers. And he has to work with records on the back end and getting all three of those disciplines in sync and happy with each other with the process. That takes some skill that not everyone has and uh, Lance did a great job and we're well on our way and everything is in place for us to keep moving forward in that advancement. Um, again, I say that this was a special award because it was a patrol officer who nominated Lance for the Officer of the Year. I think a lot of us could see what he did for the past year where a supervisor might recognize the efforts involved. But for a patrol officer to write that nomination and say that he appreciates that what Lance did made his job easier. And that there may be some people, some of us are slow to change in that field and dealing with training people and retraining people and retraining people over the year. Um, it was a never ending feat and it still continues to this day. But, um, you know, like I said, most of us when we become police officers might not think that this is one of the important jobs to serve our community. Lance did it without complaint and um, he gets to do something more fun this year. He did get his uh, request to be a firearms instructor. So maybe this year will be a little more exciting for him. But in the meantime, we appreciate all the hard work that he has done in any year. So congratulations. say thank you to the BFW for having this event. For me personally, there's no greater honor than to be recognized in this way by a community of individuals that I hold in such high esteem. So thank you. Uh, and uh, also, everything that I've been working on in the past year would not have been possible without our command staff at my department. Uh, Chief Fowler has very much an ethos of own the problem, own the solution that he tries to instill in, in each of us. Long ago, I identified we do have a major problem you know, with the speed of service that we have, um, and it all kind of backboned onto our records, that uh, type of thing. So, just having background in other areas is kind of what inspired me to help out there. So, um, there's great work that you know my colleagues at NAUPD do out on the street every day. And, uh, certainly, any of them would be just as deserving, if not more deser or deserving, of this award than I. So, um, but I appreciate. Being recognized in this way. So, and then lastly, I want to thank my family for all the support that they've been giving over the past year. It's, it's been a trying time trying to get all that together, so it helps to have the support group now. <laughs> so, thank you guys. Our next award recipient will be Deputy Matthew Curtis from Coconino County Sheriff's Office.
would like to thank the BFW too. You know, we, we recognize our own a lot with, with our internal uh, award ceremonies and things, but when things come from the community, it means so much more. When, you, when our community recognizes the efforts of, of law enforcement, it, it really hits home. <coughs> Billy talked about it a little bit earlier where it's, it's a combination of all these good things that occur within our community that makes that difference. Matt Curtis is, is, was nominated by his peers for this award. And uh, I had the opportunity to be here two years ago and to uh, help uh, Matt's brother Mike receive this same award. And Mike came to us and, and again, uh, you know, let's keep it in the family here two years later. <laughs> and it's working. And it was very fitting because uh, Mike was in the National Guard and, uh, and, and uh, did his time with the National Guard and, and uh, served his country as well. And now Matt is here and came to us in 2012 and has done an exceptional job. His activity is, is, is probably the highest that we have within our, our Flagstaff area. He's a field training officer. He gets involved in training our, our newer officers because he excels in his report writing and excels in his activity out in the field. That's really cool. And those three years that he's been with us have been exceptional. And Matt comes to us uh, after two tours with the U.S. Army in Iraq. So again, uh, it's very befitting that, uh, that a veteran we uh, receive this award uh, as well. So thank you. Um, I'm really not one for speeches, so thank you for the VFW. It's really nice to be honored, especially since I am a veteran myself, and especially coming from my peers. Thank you very much. Um, BPS is another one of our departments that we recognize. Unfortunately, we haven't had any of the members show up tonight for unforeseen reasons. So next up, we will have Blackstaff Police Department, and Officer Dustin Hemp, and we will have Dan Musselman up. BFW for hosting us again. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Dustin here. Uh, this is one of the few awards that I actually nominated the person, so I'm pretty jazzed about getting to read it here before you. Dustin here was hired in January of 2011, and since then he's excelled as an investigator. His file is full of comments and commendations for good felony investigations. He has received above standard performance reviews and has been certified as a terrorism liaison officer, field training officer, and general instructor. He was most recently appointed to our SWAT team after a very competitive process. <laughs> During the past year, Dustin was. Oh, Dustin's had a rough day. He's, tra he's a trainer too. And today is trainee sideswiped another car. <laughs> He's been in and out. <laughs> so during the past year, Dustin was recognized for two specific acts of professionalism. In June, Dustin was commended for safely entering a hazardous contact involving intoxicated adversarial individuals armed with a simulated firearm. One individual went so far as to challenge Dustin to shoot him. Dustin not only displayed great restraint in his use of discretion not to use lethal force against these individuals, but he also used his training as a defensive tactics instructor to subdue them individuals with only the reasonable force necessary to effect the arrest. Again in September, Dustin received information regarding a possible drug house in our community. He began surveillance at that residence and observed several known drug users frequent the apartment. As a result of this surveillance, he was able to make several arrests and debrief several suspects. He helped draft a search warrant using the intelligence he gathered, and during the search, a large quantity of illegal drugs and a stolen gun was recovered. The suspect was charged with several drug violations, 
as well as weapons misconduct. Yay. Dustin's actions are in keeping with the highest traditions of the police profession and provide an excellent example of his dedication to our community and the mission of the Flagstaff Police Department. And we'd like to congratulate him. Yeah. Usually Chief Treadway comes to these events and gets to read it all. And He wasn't able to be here, but he wanted to send his regrets. I can see he sent the chaplain to make sure we all behave, so <laughs> thanks. Thank you very much. I want to thank the VFW for putting this on and everyone here who served our country. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Flag PD, specifically Edward Squad and its members, Pat, Fat, I'm sorry, past and present. And uh, that's it. Thank you. That is all of our awards, and I just want to dedicate this uh, event in honor of Officer Tyler Stewart, end of watch, 27 okay. December. 2014 and all of our fallen who have made the ultimate sacrifice at home and abroad. And Chaplain, will you lead us in the final benediction? Dear Lord, we thank you for the great meal and for the opportunity to recognize these promising individuals who have inspired us with their expressions of democracy and for those who have distinguished themselves in service for our community. Lord, we thank you for the time of fellowship and for the great nation where we can assemble together and enjoy these freedoms. Lord, we pray for our freedom, that you watch over it. We pray for our service members, and we pray for our public safety employees and all who are serving together to keep our freedoms. And Lord, as we part, we pray that you watch over each and every one here tonight and protect us as we travel home. Amen. Thank you, Sebastian, for our chicken, and also Rex, Dot, and everyone who pulled this event together. Thank you.